For the is a inheritance in entity relationship diagrams, there are various possible methods for translating into the relational model. Let's first look at our example. Here we have an entity set person with a ID that identifies the person and a name. We have an entity set employee which additionally has a salary and every employee is a person. We also have an entity set customer with a credit rating and every customer is a person. So both employee and customer inherit the attributes ID and name from person. The first method for translating such an is a into the relational model is to create separate tables for each of the entity sets. So we create a table for the higher level entity set with the local attributes ID and name. We create a table for the lower level entity set employee with the local attribute salary and we create a table for the lower level entity set customer with the local attribute credit rating. For this lower level entity sets in the tables we additionally include a foreign key that references the person table. So that references the higher level entity set. So the idea is now that if we have an employee then we can look up the salary of this employee in the employee table. And if we want to know the name of this employee, then we can use the foreign key and we can look this person up in the person table and we can see that the name of this employee is James. So every employee will be in the employee table, but also in the higher level entity set table person. Likewise for the customer, here we have a customer 2. If we want to know the credit rating, we have to look into customer table. If we want to know the name of this customer, we have to follow this foreign key reference and we see that the name of the customer is Jones. So also every customer will be in the customer table as well as in the person table. The other way around is not necessarily true we could have a person in the person table that is neither in the employee nor in the customer table. So this is a very nice and elegant translation. The only minor drawback is maybe that it requires accessing multiple tables if we want to retrieve data from this database scheme. The second method for translating this scenario would be to create tables for the lower level entity sets, including all the inherited attributes. So we would create a table for employee, including the local attribute salary, plus the inherited attributes name and ID. Likewise for the customer, we would create a table with the local attribute credit rating and the inherited attributes name and ID. Normally, we would also need an additional table for person. So especially if we can have persons in our system that are neither employee or customer, such an additional table would be needed. However, if the participation is total, so if every person is a customer or an employee, then we might be lucky that we do not need the extra table then we can create the table for the generalized entity set person as a view that contains the union of the specialized tables customer and employee. However, this method has several drawbacks. First of all, we might need the explicit table person after all if we want to have foreign key constraints, so if we want to have uh, other tables referring to any person then the view is not sufficient for such foreign key constraints. Moreover, since we include all the inherited attributes in all the lower level entity sets, we store data redundantly if we have entities that participate in more than one of the lower level entity sets. So if we have a person 
that is a customer and an employee at the same time, then we store the name redundantly. We twice store the name of this person. The third method for translating this scenario is to only translate the higher level entity. So we just create a table for person and we include in this table all the lower level attributes as well. So we include in this table also the salary of employee and the credit rating. Clearly, then we have attributes in this table that are not applicable to every person. And for these attributes, we simply fill null values. So if we have an employee, then this employee does not have a credit rating if this employee is not also a customer, so the credit rating will be null. If we have a customer that is not also an employee, then the salary of this customer will be null. The advantage is that we just have a single table, so we don't need any join operations. We will later see what join operations are when we discuss SQL. But the drawback is of course that we have a lot of null values in these tables with all the disadvantages of null values that we've discussed.